Lou, you want to? situation than those people or the other way around. Uh, <clears throat> I am staying in a much uh, like healthier way than those people. Most of them are connected and rooted in this icon seat. So this icon seat is uh, <clears throat> like pervading uh, most of our experience later. So in the case of an arahat, it's not there in an arahat. So that is according to what Lokam said, the, the six unsurpassables. The last one is removal of this icon C. So the number five is the liberation through, uh, it's the signless liberation of the mind. Oh, it's okay. I mean, uh, 
Sign. So, so whatever object we are experiencing is apprehended through, through some sign. So this signless liberation of mind is uh, something like uh, the, the signs. The, the mind does not apprehend any signs, and the soul that is liberated. Oh. Mm. So staying without apprehending signs is a very difficult thing. It takes time to get used uh, used to that or familiarize with oneself with that. So, so that's why the instruction that is given to the yogi is when you hear something, you should know it. Acknowledge that uh, now what is happening is the <coughs> has the nature of hearing. When you see something, uh, you should acknowledge the see, seeing and so on. Uh, with the mind. Uh, there is like some thoughts coming up, you should just acknowledge or note the, the thinking happening without really getting into what is the thinking. No, we need to work here, the uh, probably even Vinita, when he was giving you instruction, to explain this. No, because it might be that the practice is uh, not going the most smoothly. Uh, that's yeah. why uh, Lokuhamudu and Vinita has to exert so much time and energy, energy in uh, talking this. So then, oh. So, um, no, then people come and they talk and talk and Okamdu sometimes very quickly he knows where the people are and he says it's enough. But still they don't stop and they talk more and more than he thinks, oh, it is kind of waste of time because, uh, and Vinita has to like exert himself translating all this, but I already know what, what, like, I know where the person is, so I don't need to hear more, but we cannot do too much anything, so we just uh, generally like let the person uh, talk. So, Lokam, I don't know, I'm not really getting it. He says when he was small, he had very, some kind of good way of doing things, then when he got a bit older, then he lost that, and then later on again he found it. I don't know what he talks about. So, so what he meant was, it's like at one point when he was a kid, uh, he was very like nice, he was living his life very properly, not causing trouble, but when he got, when he became, let's say, a teenager, then he started creating kind of uh, 
problems and difficulties for others. And later on, he again found a way how to be without causing trouble. So when he was the teenage, he when he was a teenager, Lokam says he was very uh, nasty and vicious, something like the serious killer at Angulimar. Hmm. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, if you know, so you can find it. Hari. But later on, somehow or another, he found a, a, again a good way and he became again a good boy. So the good time when he was small and later on when he again like found the good way it was both of the times he was paying attention to whatever he was doing so that's why you are instructed to just like observe what is there without taking the content of the like with the seeing, the seeing should be noted. With the hearing, the hearing, not what you are hearing, but the, just the hearing. Likewise, with thinking, really just the thing, uh, the fact that thinking is happening, not really what you are thinking about. <coughs> and uh, Lokam said, now in his case, when he got the instruction, the, the monk that was giving him instruction just told him, like, very little, few, like uh, maybe few sentences, like just pay attention and note everything, and that was it. Like Mr. The Yogi, these days, like uh, they have to hear that again and then again, and still it's not happening. So those days I not, I was not practicing in order to attain Nibbana. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was mostly interested in finding out about the mind, learning about the mind, and <coughs> this way of practice agreed with me, so I, I was happily following that. Hmm. So, so I had this attitude, now this is what the teacher says, and I should do exactly that and not do anything else. So every day up to the time when I go for my interview, I, I try to stay in time within the objects of my practice. Hmm? So he says, I was not sure how what he means, so I did not know how to pro properly translate, but it's something like, I have nothing to think about the past, is basically but the translation. The <coughs> and so in the suttas you find many similar <coughs> references from, uh, given by the Buddha, one of them is like, uh, don't get dragged into the past and don't build up on the future. So basically uh, like uh, what Lokam says, there is nothing to think about the past. And uh, now the future has not happened, so that is also almost like... Yeah. Oh. 
So, and, so, so anyways, it's like... Uh, so, so it's uh, like don't get dragged into the past and build up on the future and with whatever is just there is now uh, it's like apply yourself to that so you have plenty like, translates like apply yourself so look around to paraphrase that like what do you have uh, live in the present if I simplify it really. so, but it is something like what is arising now is where you are living so, in other words, uh, you can think this way, past is dead, this is like a dead, dead thing, corpse, and future is non-existent. But most people all the time live in, in a, like, with a dead thing or in something that does not exist. So, so Lokam says, now if you are meditating and you ask the meditators these days how much they stay in the let's say, present or with the object, so they might accumulate uh, maybe 10-15 minutes in a day where, where they were really like there in the practice and the rest of the time even though they are supposedly meditating, they are in past or future. So, but Lokam says, now if you manage to stay really like there in the practice for, for 12 hours a day, then that is a completely different situation. Sutta from Majjima Nikaya, so comes as then Kiyamanda. Oh, to the Makian don't ne? Oh, but they got up to two today. Oh, me Sakmanai, me Heno Pain, I did not give me picture. I give it. So, so anyway, you can refer to those suttas. We are probably not going to read them now, but it comes as they really stress out that. Uh, uh, practicing person for them they are just in the now so they are in the walking or sitting practice uh, not hanging out on the past things and not uh, like thinking about the future things just being in the now and that's what you call a fortunate day so there is this story from the ancient Sri Lanka, there was a monk known for kind of meditation or something and a king came to pay respect. So the king's king was wearing kind of rings on his hands. Huh? Okay, bangers. So he um, the monk told him, may you have long live and prosper your royal majesty, something like that. So because he saw only the like hands and maybe wrists so, of the king. So then there was actually one of the queens and she also paid respects but because the monk in the story saw only the hands, he said the same thing to the queen. 
So in our case, how many occasions of seeing and hearing are happening, but we don't stop there and for us what happens next is all kind of mental proliferation and once, only once the mental proliferation has run out of its energy, then we kind of get out of that and continue. So, so this, uh, this probably these six unsurpassables are supposedly uh, from, um, like liberations of minds that are available to arahats and that is the loving kindness liberation, compassion liberation, uh, altruistic joy liberation, equanimity liberation, then signless liberation and this liberation through the removal of the high concept. So now, even for us, we can try to walk work towards that thing little by little and it is exactly by practicing the instruction given noting the heart only as heart seen as seen and so on. Oh, Buddha Dhamma Kya Adin Na Bhuna Abhita Bharu Nang Kya Adin Na Bhaya Ava Kachita Mama Okolanda Khanda Dika Inda Dika Mamudar Bhaadu In Jeeva Chinda Indra Atta Kya Adin Na Bharu Kya Adin Na Bhaya Dhamma Bharu Kya Dhamma Kya Adin Na Bhaya Dhamma Bharu Kya Adin Na Neva Kya Dhiva Na Atta So I, you are provided with food and drink and lodgings and opportunity to practice. So I have no need to go and say, oh, your your concentration is now very good and things like that. So if I understood correctly now these kutis are given to people for practicing. So if you are uh, locked in your kuti and you do some other things uh, that you like to do and that has nothing to do with practice, then it's like uh, not good and it's kind of waste of waste of that op uh, opportunity on you. So when I was a teenager and came here to practice, I was practicing with like very like 
giving it my all and I was happy about it and I was just like my thing was just to try out everything and anything that was happening uh, without uh, uh, getting uh, involved with other people at all. Like uh, especially like uh, you know trying to catch faults of others and things like that was not interesting. Uh, can somebody please read that sutta? It's Uh second leash sutta. Leash, leash number two. Handa Samyutta, Samyutta Nikaya, because this samsara is without discoverable beginning. The first point is not discerned of beings roaming and wandering uh, on wander, wandering on, hindered by ignorance and fettered by pain. Fettered by craving. There comes a time. Suppose because a dog tied up on a leash was bound to a strong post or pillar, or pillar. If it walks, it walks close to the post or pillar. If it stands, it stands close to the post or pillar. If it sits down, it sits down close to the post or pillar. If it lies down, it lies down close to the post or pillar. So too because. The uninstructed body regards form thus. This is mine, this is my own, this is myself. He regards feeling as this is mine, this I am, this is myself. Perception, volitional formations, consciousness thus. This is my, this I am, this is myself. If he walks, he walks close to those five aggregates subject to feeling. If he stands, he stands close to those five aggregates, subject to pain. If he sits down, he sits down close to those five aggregates, subject to pain. If he lies down, he lies down close to those five aggregates, subject to pain. Therefore, because <coughs> one should often reflect upon one's own mind thus. For a long time, this mind has been defiled by lust, hated and delusion. Through the defilements of the mind, beings are defiled. With the pleasing of the mind, beings are pure. <coughs> because, have you seen the picture called carrying on? Yes, Venerable Sir. Even that picture called carrying on has been designed in this diversity by the mind. Yet the mind is even more diverse than that picture called carrying on. <laughs> say in the Commentary notes that with some picture about different Samsar. samsaric possibilities, suffering and heavens and they just took the picture and walk from village to village and show it to everybody and explain something. Even like this or other religions. Therefore because one should often reflect upon one's own mind does. For a long time this, this mind has been defiled by lust, hatred and delusion. Through the defilements of the mind, being inside are defiled. With the cleansing of the mind, being inside purified. Because I do not see any other order of living beings so diversified as those in the animal realm. 
even those beings in the animal realm have been diversified by the mind. Yet the mind is even more diverse than those beings in the animal realm. Therefore, because one should often reflect upon one's own mind thus, for a long time this mind has been defiled by lust, hatred and delusion. Through the defilements of mind, beings are defiled. With the cleansing of the mind, beings are purified. Suppose because an artist or a painter using dye or lac or turmeric or indigo or crimson would create the figure of the man or woman complete in all its features on a well-polished plane or wall or canvas. So too, when the uninstructed worldling produces anything, it is only from that only form that he produces, only feeling that he produces, only perception that he produces, only volitional formations that he produces, and only consciousness that he produces. What do you think, Bhikkhus? Is form permanent or impermanent? Impermanent and impermanent. Should I read for this, find this end? Mark is form permanent or impermanent? Impermanent. What is impermanent uh, and subject to clinging? Is it po proper to call it suffering or pleasure? Suffering. And what is impermanent subject to change uh, and suffering? Is it uh, proper to <coughs> consider it as uh, belonging to oneself? So then uh, you should uh, consider thus, this is not me, this is not mine, this is not me. And then the same is repeated about the feelings, perception, formations and consciousness. So then you practice, uh, there is like a... Like a End of that is up. There is no more for this kind of thing. So, so it's like when you practice this with wisdom, correct wisdom, then you start seeing that and uh, you reach this point. Then why can it done here then? And this the Lokam says what we what is taught here is that practice. That way of like practice. <laughs> So even though we don't mention the Anawan, what what you are being given as instruction now is from this and this sutta, the parts that the yogis get as instruction are based in this sutta. Then rupee, hang rupee, that you Then you get that color, you get the and then that kind of thing. So if you see a shape with your eye, the, I, like organ of seeing, it should stop there. It's like the seeing of the form happens and nothing more from there should be able. Yeah. So likewise for hearing, with the sound, it's, when it's heard, as soon as that happens, it, it should stop there and nothing further should be happening on top of that. Hey. So with, the, so with the eye, eye we can see forms that are near and far. With the ear it's same, uh, near, we can hear sounds that are coming from near sources or far sources. Mm. Like uh, now I can hear Vinita talking and translation translating, but when the bird was shouting, which is much further, I can hear the bird also. Oh. And then I can hear something even more far than the bird. But the other three senses, that is smell, tasting and touch, they, they have their field of uh, Objects is only something which is near. 
Pinipin niya talaga. Close. So, may pinapit ang ito. Kung namin lang ang mamagira gata, yung muna ito, mamamamiga at magigira gata, mamamamiga at magigira gata, yung muna magigira at magigira gata. Ito na yung isa, gano'n ang may. So, normally, we take it in one of these three ways as me belonging to me and this is my true self. So, now we are always taking the things in that way, but the practice is like going against this. So, when you are instructed with in the seeing, you should note the seeing, and that's that's the end of that. Hearing that, and note the hearing, and that's the end of that. So when that instruction is basically uh, kind of uh, leading the leading you towards not apprehending the things through uh, me, my, and my true self, because it's when it's the. Seeing, it's just the seeing happening. There is nothing about me, myself, or my true self, and so on. But mm -hmm. no matter how much we talk about this, is it happening in you? No, it's not happening. So then, uh, uh, not only the form, like the body should be considered as me, myself, uh, belonging to me and for myself, but also feelings, vedana, or experiencing, should not be regarded in that way. So, then the Buddha says, one should not see or uh, consider the feeling Vedana as me or belonging to me or myself, being myself. That the same thing about perceptions, uh, formations, and consciousness. Mm. So, because if you if you manage to stay without considering or uh, seeing the, these five aggregates in that way, you are getting out of the five aggregates subject of clinging situation. But because in most people or beings, it's not happening that way. So that is most beings and or even the meditators actually fail to note, note it that way properly. So that's why they, uh, for them the five aggregates are five aggregates that are clung towards, five aggregates subject to clinging. So, so, so this, uh, that means uh, if, if they are five aggregates subject to clinging, that means there is this, what they call the li, in Pali the word leash is actually like bond, the word, the English word bond is like a root of that Pali word, so we are bonded with the five aggregates and bound by them if we don't, if we don't do the noting properly. So, okay, and considering the five aggregates as not me, not myself, and not belonging. So like the simile that about the dog being bound to a post. And the, the, the dog cannot get out of the situation because of the leash being there, the bond bondage being there, he is forced to live all the time around the post or pillar. Mm. 
So the Sutta Lokamses mentions this un, they usually in English call it the uninstructed wordling. So Putujane and the Putujane me Kaldana Putujana get a bidding. Mega mega me a sutta put muku dana to put me and the putujane at me. So anyway, so now Lokham is saying this when the Sutta says in this case the uninstructed wordling, there is this uh, classification of this Putujana wordlings as the blind wordling and nice or noble wordling and here this one Lokoham says is a bit better than the blind wordling because Lokoham says the blind wordling is somebody that does not care about any morality it's like drinking uh, using bad language even beating up uh, people and uh, killing uh, different uh, beings and uh, doing all kind of bad stuff without any consideration so Lokoham says in this sutta, the word, word uninstructed wording is somebody that is not as bad as that, but still it's an uninstructed wording. So, so this uninstructed wording is somebody that is really living in that uh, described Wait, so for such for such a one there is the me, my belonging to me and myself in connection with the form or the body, with the feelings or experiencing, with the perceptions, volitional formations and consciousness. They are always seen, understood and apprehended as me belonging to me or myself or some kind of combination of those and he is like this dog on a leash which cannot get out of that situation. Then, after GVT, me, me, Panchupada, and I can't get in the garden, then I'll be here at the end. So, Lokam says now these five aggregates subject to clinging are kind of useless, but anyway, we have to somehow live. So, Lokam says now these five aggregates subject to clinging are kind of so no matter what we are like probably like each of us here are actually just this bunch of five aggregates subject to clinging. Clinging our take it every day. So whatever no matter where we came from and uh, we came here uh, but all of us are like that. So if you get in that bhavana wakaran don't it. So one needs to get into proper practice without getting in conflict. Or especially without getting in conflict with its, this fact itself. So this uh, Lokams is... Uh, uh, like... I don't know how to say it in a nice way. Making of somebody as the non-conflicting practitioner is a little bit challenging. So, like uh, getting to the point where one is the uh, non-conflicting <coughs> practitioner is uh, it takes effort and time, and it's not that much easy. Mm. Uh, Pacha so then Lokam is repeating the part of the sutta that was mentioned a few times there by the Buddha 
that uh, one should reflect. Uh, then in the end, he actually tells the monks, as a result, you should be doing this. And the, the thing to do was, you should often reflect or think this way. This uh, mind, my mind, is something that for a very long time has been something that has been defiled and been defiling by uh, the defilement of raga, which is attachment or lust, uh, then uh, likewise by uh, the defilement of other uh, doses, oh, like uh, uh -huh. anger, let's say, or aversion and delusion. Oh. So for the longest time, these uh, three main defilements kept on defiling, defiling the mind and the mind kept being defiled. So no, then this is very difficult to translate. So, so the next next uh, sentence in English it sounds a bit like a redundance, but in Pali it's like, by being defiled, the mind is defiled, something like that. Oh. And, uh, so, or the, the beings are purified by the Purification or thorough, thorough cleansing of the mind. Mm. So then the Buddha asks the man whether they have seen this uh, picture, which it sounds to me it was like a, almost like a big banner that this some kind of like spiritual seekers or teachers or whatnot used to bring together to show the like what they were teaching. So Kam says it's like we are like that. Oh. Kitten, <laughs> then the Lokam says that the Buddha says like that the monk should be reflecting that this way that this what we call the me belonging to me and myself is like this uh, created a picture or quite like uh, painted we are painting the picture of ourselves or belonging to ourselves and what is the our true self. So like these guys that were carrying the banner with the they had like pictures of depicting their religious teachings of that. So Lokam says uh, you should we sh the, the monks were asked to consider how when this me belonging to me and myself is like this, like just this picture that was painted, and we go on carrying that one here and there. Oh. So, so, like the pictures mentioned in the sutta they are like complete so the when people see those pictures they might see uh, sitting or oh, that is a beautiful lady or beautiful guy there or something like that so the pictures of the me my belonging to me and myself that are being painted by the defilement of attachment anger and uh, delusion 
are of the similar nature. Nega, many. Giatin ragged the Mogatin, Robert Eva, a low party, even other had taken me. Then make the Abalan or Janet. So, conscious like me, the, the attachment or passion and, and anger and delusion in the past life, uh, in a way, have drawn what we now have now, and we keep looking on that uh, and uh, being. Uh, Odd by that. So, so the Lokam says that the Buddha and the Sutta says that the monk should consider that the situation that is happening now is of that nature. So Lokam says the next part says more beautiful than the picture is the, the mind. No. So anyway, Lokam says he used to paint or draw and he was doing it after his high ordination and then his teacher somehow heard about that and he told him to read the sutta which the like message understood was like stop doing that oh. because like no because we have actually something like rules that tell us we, that we should not do that hmm. so Lokam says that the teacher asked him how much of at passion or attachment, anger and delusion you must produce in order to finish your painting. So so comes says now because if if you want to paint a picture of some like angry animal or angry person, you have to get in kind of something like angry mode in a way, so that's why the teacher asked him that way. Also the delusion, so this, anyways, there is initial production of deluded and let's say in this case angry minds and but not only the initial production but because you like continue and you want to finish you have to like keep them and maintain them and develop them until you are finished so how much harm is happening so then again there is this instruction for the monks that they should think and consider and see things this way. Uh, this mind has been for this very long, you might say for the longest time, this mind has been defiled and been defiled by the passion or attachment and anger and delusion. So Lokam says, uh, if you consider the length even in the, in the one day, how much of the time is it actually happening or not? And the Pakchavik Kitabha means like reflect. Mm. So it is by the the, the, the beings, so-called beings are defiled or made dirty by the dirtiness or defilement of the mind. And likewise, the beings are purified or thoroughly cleansed by the thorough cleansing of the mind. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, so the next part, which in English was translated in a bit different way, so Lokam uh, says how the Buddha says, if you consider the animals, they are the very beautiful thing in the world. So even the if you consider even the humans, they are different. So, because the, in the Pali, it is uh, like the word diversification, painting, but the painting all has hidden meaning of beauty also. So all these words are like. Yeah, and and the word mind itself because the mind is like if you if a recon means like uh, put together so so this is all these things are like well, connected so so that's why the diversification idea is there and the mind idea is there and the beauty idea is there so if you consider even not just animals but even humans or purposes sound you have like small tall thin, fat, uh, dark, uh, fair skin, uh, long hair, all, all kind of different and all kind of beautiful people. So there are like these, these some birds that are extremely beautiful and even caterpillars, some for some people they are really beautiful but of course the caterpillars here please don't touch them that is for the foreigners caterpillars here are very they have very irritative poisonous like the hair so don't like don't touch them really by hand at all if you touch them you might get very severe rash and swelling of hands and things like that but, but if you see them, they are very colorful and strange shape and like they are amazingly beautiful maybe, but uh, like, uh, but dangerous. Oh. For the snakes, they are actually kind of really beautiful. so anyway, there are these like beautiful snakes of all kind of colors that are hang like hanging and hiding in the trees, waiting. And if uh, depending on the size, if like the, it's uh, uh, if it's small ones, if uh, a butterfly or a scorpion goes around, they quickly like spring to action and catch it and eat it. Some bigger ones, they can even catch squirrels and small birds and so on. But they are very beautiful and uh, you cannot even like recognize that there is a snake hidden in those branches. So today one of the monks has found here a scorpion that was very nice black color. So Lokan says he has in all his life never seen such a nicely like... Huh? Ah, sorry, Katusa, sorry. Oh, so black, black lizard, not, not, uh, not scorpion, okay? So, so, so this uh, lizard that was basically completely black dark black black color only this like f 
you find the dots. So, anyway. So, and the architectural design? It was not about it's two feet. Oh, two feet. It's two feet mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about it was about two feet long. The banana there are these beautiful creatures like that. I don't want to uh, so anyway, I don't know, uh, probably Lokam saying even the creature became beautiful like that by the mind itself. So, so right. the way they are, the animals are now, that was kind of prepared beforehand by, by certain mind. So this nature of this defiling and I think like other things, we have been bringing this all with us for the longest time. So then the Buddha or Kamsas gives just the advice to the monks, you should consider that and ref like, reflect mm -hmm. on that, that for this longest time this situation has been happening. Mm -hmm. So Lokam says then the last simile is again about the painting. So Lokam says like before the death you create this picture of yourself. Rupe, Rupe, Mama Nere, Magine, Magi Atme, Noigra, and Rupe, Dekalati. But now, if you want to prevent that from happening, you need to start practicing now in order to develop this, uh, I don't know what to call it, like counteractive attitude of not taking the things as me, myself, and me, mine, and myself. form we have this form, the body, for a long time and uh, we never really understand the impermanence of the body. No. So, Lokam says we don't see really and consider the body as impermanent. So. You yeah. mentioned something like, like later on in the life he has gotten some understanding about it, but only now when he's 80 and very much sick, he's really getting the meaning then when in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta Buddha tells uh, Ananda uh. how his body is like a broken car that is uh, held yes. together by different straps. Uh, so Lokamdu said, my, like he did not use that simile, he says, like, I, my body is like a uh, broken lorry. So, okay, so because we don't have cards these days, but like... No, paripakko vayo maya paritam amaji pahaya vo gamitam dikatam no zarnamat balano pocha latanam yi. Then me ega itandati bulldo indo ne, me merindyana gittu ne me. So now the message here is really, if it's too late if to start training yourself to think about these things and getting ready, but only when you are near death, 
you have to start like already now you know so then you might have chance where the death is coming that you achieve the level where the satisfactory level where you no, no, but, yeah, anyway so may you be well and happy and thanks for this <coughs> may you be protected by the people here. Yeah.